Good morning, Washington Street family. This is Mr. Terrence talking to you guys from the beautiful sanctuary. First and foremost, I want to wish you guys a very, very, very Christmas. I hope that you got everything that you wanted. And if you didn't get everything that you wanted, then it is okay because Christmas is not about gifts. It's about Jesus and it's about celebrating his birthday. So next up, I want to give a special shout out to all the families who sent out their videos for the Lord's Prayer. Children, you guys look so beautiful recite the Lord's Prayer. We really enjoyed it. We can't wait to show it to you guys. So without further ado, today we're going to be talking about the prodigal son. As you guys know, Jesus taught lessons through many different ways. And one of the famous ways that he taught his lessons was through examples. And so one of the examples that he talked about was the story of the prodigal son. So if you don't know the story, basically there's this man who had two sons, and he was a very wealthy man. He was a very rich man, and he had two sons. So one of his sons came up to him and asked for his inheritance, or he asked for some money that was uh, promised to him. So uh, the, son's, uh, the father said, well, sure, son, I'll give you the money. And so after the son got the money, he left home. And so after he left home, he went to another state, he went to another state, and he just spent all of his money on nothing. So to kind of sort of make it more relatable, uh, there was a son who spent all his money on unnecessary clothes. He spent all his money on unnecessary jewelry, on unnecessary games, on unnecessary food, and all of that. So then before you know it, the son who got his money, he lost all of it. He lost all of it, and he was just spending it, spending it all crazy. He lost all of his money. So then he came to the realization that, you know, he should start back working. So what he did was he went to he went to a famous a workplace in town and he said, listen, just give me all the work that you have. I'll work as a slave. Now, this story is so important because this is the same son who was rich. This son had servants. This son had people who would clean for him, who would feed him. And now he spent all of his money and he's working as a slave. So then, you know, there's a big drought. There's a big famine that comes to the city and he realizes I should go back to my father's house. I should apologize and I should say, Father, I have sinned and I'm ready to come back home. I'm so ready to come back home. I'll come back as less than what I am. I'll come back as a slave and I will work for you. So then he has his mind made up and he says, okay, I'm gonna go up to the father, I'm gonna go up to my father and I'm gonna apologize and work as a slave. So as he's going towards his father's house, his father sees him in the distance as, as the son is coming back, his father sees him in the distance, and as the son is running, the father starts running too. Now, this part of the story is so, so touching, and it's so important and so inspiring, because in the Jewish custom, kings don't run. Because of everything that they have on, as far as their robes, and as far as their sandals, kings don't run. So when the king saw his son running back to him, he was filled with so much joy and so much compassion because his son was returning home, that the king decided to run. So as they're reunited, the son says, Father, I've sinned, I'm sorry, um, I'll go back as a slave, I'll do whatever you need me to do. And instead of the father being mad, the father throws the son a celebration because he is returning home. Now, like I said before, the father had two sons, so now the older son is mad. He's upset, saying, well, you know, I've done everything you've asked for me, and you never throw me this type of celebration, so why are you doing it for the younger son? And the father simply says, because we thought that your younger brother was dead, but he actually returned home. So this story is so important because it just shows how much the father loves us, and it shows that no matter what we do, if we run away from him, if we turn away from him, if we just, if we just live carelessly without even thinking about what he has for us, and we decide to come back, the father would still love us. So in this time of year, I want you guys to think about that. You know, maybe you didn't get everything that you wanted for Christmas, but at the end of the day, the Father would literally do anything to, for you to understand that he still loves you and that he still cares about you. So for my children, this is what I want you guys to do. So after this lesson, your parents should have two emails. So one of the emails is going to be this worksheet right here, and it's also going to be shown 
It's called a picture crossword. This is for my a little older babies, okay? So what you do is you look at the picture and then you just do it like a regular crossword puzzle. You just write whatever the picture is. So right here, this is some pigs. So what you'll do is you'll write pigs right here and so on and so forth. And then on the next worksheet, it's called the color of the letter. So this worksheet is going to involve, you know, maybe some markers or some crayons or some colored pencils. And what you do is if you see the color or if you see the word F, I'm sorry, the letter F, then you color it red. If you see the letter O, you color it blue. If you see the letter R, you color it orange, and so on and so forth. And I want you guys to email these back to me so that I can showcase it on our weekly service. I hope you guys have a great day. Love y'all.